Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of the Image TV Podcast, episode number 20. And I have with me one of my very own sponsors and good friend, Elijah, in the house. Elijah is also the owner and president of Grizzly Clean. And uh, <clears throat> we have a special guest on the show with us tonight. Uh, someone that we've been talking about for a while uh, in the image program. And I think that you all are going to enjoy this story. Uh, we have with us Commissioner Jermaine Wilson, uh, who is actually the former mayor of Levingsworth, Kansas. And uh, I had the opportunity to actually meet and uh, greet and actually chop it up with Commissioner Wilson. And I want to tell you that this was absolutely awesome. Uh, this man has lived the life of prison. He's lived the life of praise. Uh, he's one that is definitely, uh, that goes down in the history books. He's nationwide. And so ladies and gentlemen, uh, please allow me to introduce to you Commissioner and Ex-Mayor Jermaine Wilson of Levingsworth, Kansas. Jermaine, it is a pleasure to have you on the Image TV podcast, my friend. Hey, my pleasure, man. I, hey, I'm very grateful and thankful, man, for the opportunity uh, to share my story and to also be present on this platform that you have given me today. Well, thank you. First of all, uh, I want to start off, uh, before I get into your story, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, and what you do, and then kind of go right on into your story? Yes, sir. My pleasure. Uh, so my name is Jermaine Wilson. I'm uh, from Leavenworth, Kansas. I was actually born in a small city uh, called Kennett. Uh, I mean, from Kennett, Missouri, Boot Hill, from those who are familiar with Southeast uh you know, Boot Hill, Missouri. Uh, I actually moved here to Leavenworth, Kansas when I was five years old. So Leavenworth, Kansas is definitely my home. Uh, you know, I was blessed and fortunate to be raised by two parents. Uh, just so happened my uh, my dad, he experienced the hardships and struggles, uh, being incarcerated, lived the life of crime, I dealt with the addiction, and my mom, she ended up dealing with alcoholism at a very early age. By the time she was 21 years old, uh, she had four children, and at that particular time, I was uh, the fourth child that was born. And so my mom, she dropped out of school when she was 15 years old to raise my uh, oldest sibling, which is my sister. And, you know, it, it was just a, a rocky road for us. Uh, but, you know, my mom, she loved all of her children. She wasn't very well educated, but she did everything everything that she could to make sure that her children had a, a, a way that was prosperous and she did everything that she could to make sure uh, that she was able to survive for her family. And by the time I was five years old, she wanted to make sure that we had a, a different upbringing that she was used to. And so she moved us to Leavenworth, Kansas. Currently at that time, my dad was in prison and my mom moved us to Leavenworth, Kansas. My uncle, he served here in Leavenworth, Kansas, which is considered to be a military town. Uh, but when she moved us here, she was unfamiliar with the territory where she was moving us into, uh, which was the ghetto. And so I'm sure for those who experienced the hardships, uh, know the background history of the uh, the ghetto. They they know what it's like uh, to endure the crime, uh, the violence that was present. And it had an impact on me and my brother, uh, which who I looked up to at that particular time. And, you know, it, it was a struggle overall. And so my mom did the best she could to raise us. My dad came back into the picture. Uh, but by the time he came back into the picture, you know, we was already saturated with the crime, the violence, uh, everything that was exposed to, and it had effect on us at a very, very early age. And, you know, and I started to respond to the violence, uh, the criminal lifestyle uh, that I was exposed to at an early age. And that's how I ended up allowing that to impact my life, which led led me into a life of crime at a very early age. Now, let's talk about the transformation, because that's what's remarkable. You're probably one of the very few people that I've ever met that 
I can honestly say has a story that's better than mine. <laughs> and that's that's giving you a lot of credit, my friend, let me tell you. Uh, but so you went to prison and then did you ever think that you would become mayor of Levensworth, Kansas? Mayor period for that no, matter. <laughs> Uh, not, not, not whatsoever. And, and, and I tell you this is so. I prior to me going to prison, uh, my God ended up getting a hold of my mom and dad, saved them, and they tried to force us to go to a church. Uh, but by then, you know, we've already made up in our mind that we was going to live that criminal lifestyle because that was more uh, appealing and appeasing to our flesh, and. Uh, by the time I was 15 years old, I committed a robbery charge and was sentenced to four years of juvenile corrections. Uh, during that time, you know, I got heavily involved off the, uh, to the gang lifestyle. And by the time I was 19 years old, I got released. You know, I felt like I needed to make up for lost time. And I got involved off into the drug game. And by the time I was 20 years old, you know, I had picked up a, a dope charge and I was sentenced to prison. And during my time in prison, you know, I was lost. I, I, I had an identity crisis. I didn't know, you know, what I should do or, you know, which way I should go. But the, the thing that was different for me, you know, I had a son in the midst of, you know, my, my miss, my, my, my struggles, my hardship, my pain, my sorrow. God was trying to get me atten- get my attention uh, during the time that I was going through this hardship by blessing me with the child. My son was eight months, eight months old when I went to prison. And when I went to prison, I realized that I had hit rock bottom. I was at the lowest point of my life and I wanted something different. I needed something different. And that's when I cried out to God. I said, God, like, I need you in my life. Like, I I need a second chance. And and if I don't make the decision to change my life, what's going to end up happening? You know, I'm going to continue to uh, perpetuate this cycle, this criminal lifestyle uh, that my dad did, my brother did, my sister been to prison. And it was like nothing is going to change and so when I was in prison, that's when I made up my mind. I said, man, I, I have to stop this. If not, I'm going to pass this down to my son, and he's going to pass it down to his children as well. And so uh, I think that this is so remarkable because, first of all, this is a, a reentry show. Uh, the IMAGE program stands for Inmate Movement Against Gang Evolution, and you are uh, just hitting every element of what this uh, whole program is about. I think that your story speaks so much volume uh, that it just blows people away. Now, to actually become mayor, did you ever see yourself in politics? Nah, not not whatsoever. And so I'll tell you this, when when I did get released from prison, uh, I started sharing my story uh, encouraging people not to make the same mistakes that I made. Uh, but my main focus was to create unification throughout my entire community uh, because during this time, it was a very, very sensitive time. Uh, racism, division was at its all-time peak. Uh, we had different organizations being created based upon the Trayvon Martin, Mike Brown case. Uh, but the thing that I noticed that was lacking there was really no organization promoting unification. And so when I realized that what we were missing in our own community and throughout the entire nation as well, uh, people needed to be unified despite our differences, uh, despite our preferences, no matter what, at the end of the day, in order for us to grow, to mature, to create the positive changes that we need throughout our nation, we need to work together. And so my mindset was just, it's directly focused on bringing people together. And so it wasn't about me trying to use this organization to create an opportunity for me to get involved in politics. It was just merely focusing on bringing people together no matter what. Man, that's awesome. So you're saying that uh, 
basically just doing what was lined up with God's word is, is what you stuck yes, to. Sir. And uh, that was your blueprint. And that's what made you successful. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. And because, you know, God, word, man, how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. There are many parts, but only one body. Each one of us are called to do our particular part. Because, you know, look, I, I was just praying to God, like, hey, God, I can be the toenail. <laughs> just help me to be able to uh, realize what my purpose is. And I want to be able to fulfill that. And when God revealed it to me, hey, he was calling me, man, to unite my community. And as I was serving, uniting my community, working with the police department, bringing blacks and whites and including politicians, all people together, that's when God opened up that door for me to be able to get involved off in the politics. And then <clears throat> real quick, uh, the transformation from living the street life then to living the clean life. Uh, obviously, the clean life is much better, but uh, me and you have some similar uh Things in common as far as like going to prison for selling drugs. I, I went for possession with intent to deliver. And when I went to prison, of course, in the state of Iowa, uh, it's much different than uh, Missouri or Kansas. Uh, but as I finished my prison term, there were people that were uh, that knew who you were. They were aware of who you were. Uh, there was a lot of talk about. There's this black mayor in Levingsworth, Kansas, and it gave hope and it inspired people uh, to want to do things positive. And so I, and I know when I heard that it was from somebody telling me that uh, they had heard or they had actually wrote you a letter and got a letter back, you know. And so that really made their day and, and, and it was spreading around. And then when I got out and I reached out to you, it was all by faith. I mean, 100% by faith. And so uh, I just want to say uh, you're, a, you're a blessing to uh, a lot of people in this world. And, and, and even to me, you, you inspire people with your actions. And so uh, how does, take us through a little bit of the sacrifices, because there's a lot of people that want the success that you have. Mm -hmm but they're not willing to make the sacrifices. So I, I definitely want to sum this up, man. One thing I learned a long time ago, uh, sometimes you have to be willing to, to give up in order to go up. Nobody want to be considered a sellout. Nobody want to be considered a failure. Uh, nobody want to be considered as a, a nobody. Uh, the moment I realized that Christ made me a somebody and I realized I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, that's when I started letting go of uh, that negative person that I created. Because I truly believe each one of us that are that was involved off into the street life, we had to create this image, this facade. Uh, to be someone that we that yes. we really yes. wasn't. Yes. So I never created to be this person, but we created this person. But when I found my true identity in Christ, that's when I knew I had to let go. And because I let go, I was able to bring on so many other things that God was blessing me with. Uh, you know, a uh, 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 a mentor. Uh, true, genuine friends who was going to be there with me through the thick and thin, not just when times were good, uh, people who was willing to push me forward and not pull me down. And so when I had made up in my mind and I realized who I was and I found my true identity, you know, skies was the limit, not just the skies, heavens was the limits for me. And I knew at the end of the day, as long as I'm genuine, uh, I'm I'm pure, I'm honest, uh, I'm transparent, integrity, you know, uh, like nothing can hold me down. The only thing that could ever stop me from being successful would be me. And so the moment I let go of all of those things that didn't matter, 
I was able to embrace those things that truly matter. And that was fulfilling my purpose and being the true me. And so as I started being me, who God has called me to be, man, that's when God really started opening up those doors that no man could close. And that's when I was able to literally fulfill my purpose, found true, genuine happiness, joy. And, I mean, it, it, it was just remarkable, unexplainable. And there's a scripture that always come to mind. Christ always tells this man, if you exalt my name, I'll draw all men unto me. And I think we all can agree you know, when you're looking for resources, the best resources you find are within people. And the moment I continue to exalt to Christ, that's when Christ started bringing people unto me and allowed them to be able to open doors that I could not have done on my own. And which led me into the position where I'm at today. Ladies and gentlemen, you're tuned into the Image TV podcast, episode number 20. And we've got ex-mayor and current commissioner Jermaine Wilson live on the scene. We're going to go to a quick commercial. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more with Jermaine and listen to his story and some more insight. We'll be back after these messages. Ladies and gentlemen, you're tuned into the Image TV podcast in Des Moines, Iowa. And we've got our special guest, Jermaine Wilson, in the house. And I'm telling you, he is a remarkable individual with a just a beautiful story. I mean, every time I think about this man's story, it, it reminds me of myself, you know? Yep, yep. And we've got one of our... Uh, sponsors and the president and founder of Grizzly Clean in the house with us, Elijah. And so Elijah, tell us a little bit about Grizzly Clean. What exactly is it that you guys do? And is there a contact number or website in case people want to use your services? So Grizzly Clean's contact number is 515-393-9778. We have a website. It's grizzlyoperations.com. And so we started off uh, last March. We started doing mobile detailing where we would show up to your job, your house, and we will detail your vehicle right there in the parking lot. You don't have to take it to no uh, detailing shop at all. And we would have all the equipment with us in the truck. And we started doing car lots and everything. We also got a shop now out in West Des Moines. So you can either bring your vehicle to the shop or we can come to you. And then we started doing construction cleaning. So we help uh, when people are doing construction, we pick up all the trash, broken pieces and everything. We go to houses that are ready to be touched up that are about ready to get posted for being sold. And we do final uh, cleanings for that. All right. And it looks like uh, you're also involved with uh, construction cleaning. Yep. Okay. So... Uh, could you tell us your number one more time for those that may have been listening? They don't want to rewind the tape. Uh, tell them uh, your your contact information. My number for Grizzly Clean is 515-393-9778. You can go on the website, uh, grizzlyoperations.com, and you can see the detailing and the construction clean. And I will say you guys do a great job detailing those cars. Yep. Oh, yeah. Those things look like brand new Hot Wheels out there on the street. <laughs> right. <laughs> Got to make sure. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're tuned into the Image TV podcast, episode number 20, and we're locked and loaded with the famous mayor. We'll be back after these messages to get some more of that insight of Mayor Wilson, former Mayor Wilson, and current commissioner. We'll be back after these messages.
Ladies and gentlemen, we're back on the Image TV podcast, episode number 20. And we've got the commissioner, Jermaine Wilson, in the house with us. He's been breaking down his story, giving God all the praise. This is probably one of the most realest episodes that I've ever been a part of. Uh, one of the most realest stories. And Jermaine, you know, when you talked about the self-identity, that is so important. You can't stress that enough because... One of the things that I seen in prison was people walking around and had no clue of who they really were. Uh, once all the, you know, all the uh, the wear and tear comes off of you, you're sitting in those uh, concrete cells, and all there is is you in that mirror. There's there's no disguises, and so. Anytime you try to act like somebody that you're not, it comes out, especially when you're in prison and it shows. And so that was one of the things that I was able to discover. And I thank God that I was able to uh, really get on my hands and knees and God was able to reveal who I was. Once I discovered that, oh man, I had no problem just being me. And even to this day, that's carried me on. And so... Uh, I just, I can't give God enough praise uh, for what he's done for me. And hearing your story, I mean, tonight is all about you. So uh, let's get back to you. And, and uh, you're such a giver in your community. Uh, you, you know, t tell us a little bit about that. I mean, you have also your hat, uh, one of your uh, nonprofit organizations. Yeah, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so, so Unity in the Community, we're a nonprofit organization, and our main purpose is to break generational uh, racism uh, by educating our youth uh, to love one another, to promote peace. And we want to build community relationships with our local law, uh, local law enforcement and also serve those that are in need. I, I think we all can... Uh, you know, attest to the fact that at one point of our lives where, you know, we've struggled, we experienced hardships and rock bottom and God has placed someone in our lives to be able to help supply and meet all of our needs. And so that's our way of giving back to our community. Uh, there's always a need, no matter if it's with the homeless community, uh, with the youth, which needs some mentorship, and then work with the local law enforcement. You know, there has been a, a divide nationally between, uh, you know, our police department and also with those individuals, uh, you know, that are involved off in the community, the lack of trust that has been there from police brutality, uh, from, you know, racism, for individuals not truly understanding, you know, who individuals are as a person. And so we want to be able to promote peace and in our way of serving together, working together and bringing people together, uh, no matter what, you know, their political affiliation may be or what their, you know, race is, because none of that matters. But to be able to serve together and work side by side and serve those that are in need, that's what matters the most. And that's how what we focus on. Hey, Amen. <clears throat> Jermaine, I think also it's incredible that you talk about sheriffs, you talk about police officers, and here you are the mayor. Now, the mayor is over the police officers and the sheriffs. I mean, here you were uh, a man who uh, was an inmate once upon a time, changed his life, and gave everybody who knows your story hope. It's, it's, it's instant hope when you hear your story because you went so far. I mean, to become an inmate, to become to start off with an inmate, to become a mayor, and then to become a commissioner, I mean, that you, you can't explain that other than God. Well, that's it, man. <laughs> so uh, a lot of... And so when I tell people, I tell you like this, I don't ever tell people my story. I get, I, I allow them the opportunity to learn me as a person. And then when they find out who I am, my story, or they look me up or they find out through other people, they always ask me, man, like, how did this happen? And, and I literally tell the man with God, all things are possible. 
With man, none of this is possible. I learned to die to my flesh, die to myself. And one, the moment I found my identity through Christ, that's when God tells us in his word, he's going to do exceedingly abundantly above all things we can ask or think of. And because I trusted the process, I didn't allow prison to be a place of, you know, this is the penitentiary allowed to be like Penn State for me. Like I'm in college and it was a time for me to be able to educate myself, to invest in myself, to learn out who I am as a person. And I realized and discovered my purpose. God created each one of us to be servants, no matter what your, you know, your, your, your long term purpose is. As long as you continue to serve God, God is going to use you to do extraordinary things. And as long as you continue to focus on just focusing on serving him and allow him to open doors that no man can close. Once you walk through those doors, you never know what he has in store for you. And just so happened, it, what was behind that door for me was me becoming the mayor. And with my background, me running from the police to be able to serve with the police, to be able to make a difference and impact people and bring people together uh, with unification with the police. It's nothing but God. Like, I, I couldn't have predicted this. I couldn't have wrote this out. It's just God. The only thing that I did, I discovered my why, and I said yes when God called me to that opportunity to serve him. Amen. Well, I want to say thank you very much for your time. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Again, this here is what makes the Image TV podcast so special, is hearing stories like this. Uh, it's also, uh, it was great meeting you, uh, and I look forward to working with you, Commissioner. Hey, brother, so I got to ask you a question, man, before you uh, let me go. You and your partner, what is it that God has called you to do? If you don't mind me asking you and putting you on the spot, you and your partner. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what has God called me to do? Uh, I think, yes. I feel that God has called me to give freely uh, what I have uh, naturally and and to help people i've been in my community here uh since i've been released from prison uh just roughly three under three years ago and i've had the opportunity to step right into a a workforce environment at the evelyn k davis center here in des moines iowa and help in my community my fellow uh brothers who come out of prison uh, the Evelyn K. Davis Center has, has actually created a platform for me to be able to give back. And uh, that may be somebody calling me um, at 12 o'clock midnight uh, who has a son that's just getting out of prison and they need some help or they may have some information or need some information about where to go to or where to turn to some references or they may need some clothes or whatever it is that they're in need of, I've been able to successfully help them. And I know that that's definitely a calling from God because uh, it's a passion that I have. And uh, we talk about reentry uh, on the Image show, on the Image TV podcast. And I always emphasize that you have to have a passion when you're uh, working in any field, especially when you're you're doing something uh, that you're getting paid for. I, I think that you should have a passion for doing that. And so I've been through the training processes. And so I feel that God has definitely put on my heart to be able to serve, to serve the people, serve the people that are in need. And I like to do that. And uh, I definitely feel that that's a heavy calling. I mean, just, uh, just with your remarks, man, it made me think about, you know, uh, when your passion and your purpose meet, it bursts you into your destiny. So, hey, brother, I'm right there with you, man. Uh, hey, that's, that's, those are good words. Words of wisdom, my friend. And what about you, sir? So uh, I would say maybe like hope something to look up to because like a lot of people know me in the past where you know i've gotten some trouble 
I got a lot of health issues going on where it's really hard for me, like on a day to day basis to even get up, up the stairs sometimes, you know? And then, so once I got my health problems going on, I had to leave the kitchen life when I was working in the kitchen. So then I tried to go get a job somewhere else, but because of my past, my record and everything, I couldn't. So a lot of people knew that. And then I ended up developing two companies within this past year. And I have a lot of people that come to me for asking for advice, seeing what I've done and everything. I've got like younger people, even like older people that are like, you know, in their forties, fifties that say that I really inspire them from what I've done in a short amount of time and what I face on a day to day basis. Amen. Well, hey man, and my main purpose was asking those questions was, uh, you know, I'm sure that we've all experienced it and you were able to, uh, you know, to address where you came from to where you're currently at and to be able to recognize your purpose in life. Uh, that's what's much needed to those uh, individuals that are watching right now. You know, it doesn't matter where you came from. It's just where you're currently at right now and the decision that you make, which is going to make a difference in your life. Uh, because I truly believe God gave us the ability to be able to uh, create the opportunities for us and be able to pave the way for our future. So, amen. God bless you, brothers. Hey, uh, I think that the way this is went, it would only be right to end this show with a prayer. So, amen. Uh, would you lead us in prayer, uh, Commissioner yes, Wilson? Yes, sir. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we come humbly, Lord, before your throne of grace, giving you thanks and praise. Father God, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all things, Lord, that you have done for us, Father God. Father God, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for our past, our present, and the future, Lord, that you have prepared for us, Father God. For we know, Lord, that all things work together, Lord, for your good, Father God. God. Help us, Lord, to continue, Lord, not to be able to walk in shame. Help us, Father God, Lord, just be able to be thankful and grateful, which have allowed us, Lord, to be able to go through in our lives, Father God, because we know, Lord, that you're going to use our past to prepare us for our future, Father God. So, Lord, we honor you. We give you praise. We thank you, Lord, for our purpose. We thank you, Lord, for the process, Lord, that you are leading us into, Father God. And, Lord, Father God, just help us, Lord, to continue, Lord, to be able to create unity, Lord, within our communities. Help us, Lord, to continue, Lord, to give words of encouragement, inspiration, but most of all, Father God, Lord, when we open up our mouths, Lord, that we would speak words, Lord, of hope that would lead people, Father God, Lord, to you, because you are our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have given us the opportunity, Lord, to be able to do great things, Father God, in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for the purpose. We thank you, Lord, for the calling, and most of all, Father God, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the friendship that you have established, Lord, on this particular day. We honor you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hey, thanks a lot, Brother Wilson. I appreciate your time, man. And Thank you, bro. Yes, sir. Hit me up. Okay, we'll talk to you later. Hi, right, bro. Yes, right. sir.